Welcome to MariaDB ServerFest 2020 and a presentation about MariaDB Color Cluster. My name is Seppo Joakola, I'm a CEO and developer of MariaDB in Codership. I have a quite long track record of clustering solutions, already 15 years and over. Codership itself is a small technology company focusing in research and development mostly around uh, replication solutions for open source databases. Galera Cluster is our product. We have started to work on that in 2008. Uh, we do business through support and consulting and we are partner of MariaDB and uh, we are member of our MariaDB uh, support team for Galera related topics. Uh, agenda of this presentation is uh, just a very general overview of a cholera replication, cholera clustering in MariaDB. There will be another presentation about cholera new features you can find in Maria 10.5 and 10.6. Uh, that presentation is also in a MariaDB server fest uh, happening later on. But this is quite uh, general overview, uh, just uh, basic concepts of uh, Galera clustering. I'm looking at the configuration of uh, uh, Galera cluster, how you can turn your MariaDB server to work as a Galera cluster, synchronous multi-master cluster uh, for MariaDB. Uh, an overview of the features of what you can gain with a, uh, such cluster solution and then uh, a few words about the releases and release cycles of the cholera uh, releases. So let's go ahead. This is a standalone MariaDB server you can get from the MariaDB distributions. So you have a clients connecting to what just one MariaDB server. Uh, if this is a MariaDB 10.1 or later, you already have all, all the cholera. Uh, software installed in your installation, you, so you can just by configuration turn it to operate as a node in a Galera cluster. Galera is a plugin, replication plugin, and in a config, configuration you need to tell that where the plugin resides, you have it in, in your installation somewhere in, on your disk, uh, documentation should tell where it resides. And in a configuration variable VSRE provider, you give address to this uh, plugin uh, library implementation. Uh, and with that, when you start your server with such a configuration, you have a, a single node MariaDB uh, Galera cluster, just one node in a cluster. That's not yet a very functional cluster, so you need more members. You should start a secondary node uh, telling it to use a uh, um, uh, color plugin and also you must tell that the address of the other node in a cluster. Uh, the address is given with a uh, configuration variable VSREP cluster address and it's practically it's just the IP address of the uh, of the other member in a, in a cluster. In principle, all nodes that you configure for your cluster should have the VSREP cluster address specified and it's a good idea to give them uh, the full list of all potential members that uh, your node might want to join to form up a cluster. So if, if you have a three nodes you should in your VSREP cluster address uh, list all these free IP addresses. This VSRAP cluster address variable is used only uh, for the handshaking of the handshaking part of, uh, of the protocol when the node, nodes join to the cluster. After that, the VSRAP cluster address variable is not used at all. Uh, the third configuration variable here is uh, uh, VSRAP SST method. It tells the uh, the method how a new node joining to the cluster can get uh, the copy of the database so that uh, it would have the same data content as, as the rest of the cluster has. And here the, in this example the method is rsync so the joining node will just get an rsync 
copy of the data directory. So all the files that we are, are present in the first node will be just copied over the internet to the joining node. <laughs> and with this configuration, uh, uh, the cluster will handshake the jo with the joining node and then send the uh, a fresh copy of the database through R syncing to the joining node. And when this uh, copying is complete, the node will be an active member in a cluster. All transactions happening in the in uh, both of these nodes actually they will be uh, synchronously replicated between each other. However, two nodes is not yet a very very functional cluster. You should have a three or more. So you, you just need to make another installation of of the same. MariaDB server configure the plugin and the cluster addresses correctly and then join the node and then you have a functional free node cluster. This is the minimum recommended size for the cluster just for the sake of, uh, of uh, these nodes or the cluster to decide that uh, if there are communication problems between the nodes uh, then the cluster must uh, find out if, if there are two nodes who can communicate with each other, then that, that part of the node will, will be the majority and the third node will be kicked out for a while until he, uh, he gets a better connectivity to, with, the, with the rest of the team. Three nodes is the minimum number to make a meaningful voting in, in error situations. Uh, usually the clusters that uh, that are deployed, they are three, four, five. These are maybe the most use, used cluster sizes. People are usually using cholera cluster for data safety reasons. Uh, the more nodes you have in a cluster, the more copies or backups of your data you have actually in place. Every node in a cluster is is a full backup of each other because of the synchronous replication that the uh, cluster is carrying out. Uh, all writes in the cluster they will be replicated immediately to the cluster. If you write to the middle node, uh, the transaction will be replicated, uh, and uh, the. Uh, the transaction will be committed only in the middle node in this example. It will be replicated to the two other nodes, but not necessarily committed yet before the client gets the OK status back from, uh, from his uh, commit. Uh, uh, so we know that uh, the commit is really complete in one node and it may or may not be complete in other nodes but every node has the transaction, has received and acknowledged the transaction. And also these nodes, they, they will when uh, later on commit the same transaction. That much guarantee for synchronicity uh, Calera cluster provides. Uh, all reads, read, all nodes can be used for reading, so you can safely read from any of these nodes. There are no nothing preventing that, of course. And the reads are very, very close to each other, so the cluster progress is very even. It doesn't really matter where you are reading from. You will get the same results in, in practice. Uh, in a nutshell, Calera uh, replication is uh, is a generic plugin for any database server. When we started to implement the Colora clustering, we first defined the um, uh, definition of API between any database server and, uh, and a replication uh, plugin. And this project is it's a, there's a separate project for this. We call it the WriteSet Replication API project, or VS Rep for short. These uh, clusters that are implemented with Colora, they replicate write sets, which is practically the um, change set of a happening in, in a transaction, and this change set is then replicated over the uh, replication uh, layer and then applied and made, made persistent in every node in, other node in the cluster. Uh, when a database server provides this API, then it can uh, load color plugin. 
and with that uh, there is uh, one node of a cluster and having more of these nodes uh, will build up a, a database cluster. With MariaDB uh, having a MariaDB 10.1 or later installation you just make a configuration uh, through vsrep underscore variables uh, and uh, then you can start playing with the cluster itself. Here is the full list of configuration variables available. For Galera clustering, this is a listing from uh, MariaDB 10.4, a big number, very small text, but uh, let's not go through this list in more detail. You, in, in practice you only need just a handful of variables for tuning. But usually it's about telling the provider and the cluster address and the SST method that usually is enough for a configuration. There are also status variables just to see that how the cluster is doing and the monitoring tools use these status variables in Maria 10.4. Uh, the number of status variables for VSREP is 66. Uh, three most used ones are VSREP ready for the cluster readiness of uh, accepting transactions, cluster status and cluster size. Usually monitoring uh, solutions pull these variables to, to see that uh, the overall status of the cluster. Then there are a big number of other other status variables to see that how cluster, uh, transactions are doing in a cluster or uh, all other aspects of the uh, of the cluster healthiness. Besides of these variables, uh, configuration variables and status variables, there are also free tables uh, for cluster information. You can find these in a MySQL schema, VSREP cluster. VSREP cluster members and VSREP streaming log table. Uh, the cluster table is just the definition of the cluster, the name of it, of the cluster. VSREP cluster members, uh, it has more information, it lists all the active uh, nodes or members of, of this cluster, their names, addresses, IP addresses and um, uh, UUIDs for these nodes. So if the cluster size is three uh, nodes, you should see three lines in this cluster members table as well. And finally, streaming log table. It's about a new feature that we added in Calera 4, which uh, incarnated in uh, MariaDB 10.4 release for the first time. Streaming replication is a method for replicating very big transactions or very long-term transactions as well. Uh, Galera 3 and earlier installations uh, had a problem that if the transaction size grow over a certain limit, uh, it could uh, uh, cause problems or big delays for the cluster. Uh, just because uh, of the size of the transaction was too much for the uh, replication system to handle. With streaming replication that we implemented for uh, Galera 4 installations, we are splitting the big transaction to small parts, uh, which we uh, execute in every node at the same time in, in the cluster. So the tra transaction is kind of processing in small pieces in every node in the cluster. And the status of and state of this uh, uh, transaction execution is stored and maintained in this VSREP streaming log table. Uh, it can be, uh, we use it, uh, we as a color developer, we use it for for guaranteeing uh, recovery for uh, such long-term transactions in case of any, any cluster problems, node hangs or node crashes or uh, reboots, we can always take back the long-term transaction. Uh, but it can also be used for monitoring and, and just picking that what kind of long transactions you have have in your system how long they have been processing and it could also be a, one method for troubleshooting if there is a ill-behaving long transaction going on in the system. 
The features that Calera cluster brings uh, is first and foremost is synchronous replication. As I said, it's not fully synchronous. It's uh, close to uh, fully synchronous, but the commit is guaranteed only only in one of the nodes in the cluster. But you can see that or make your session to have a we can call it a look and feel of a synchronous replication. There is a session variable VSREP sync weight which you can specify so that your, for example, your reads, when, when you read something from a node, it would wait until uh, the slave replication queue is, is fully committed so that guarantees that you will see all the earlier writes. You won't start processing your reads before you, uh, all incoming writes have already committed. With that uh, makes uh, read somewhat slower because you have to wait until until replication queue is committed. The good news here is that the replication queue is usually very short, and that's because a color cluster implements flow control, so that uh, if there are pending transactions uh, goes over a certain limit. By default, it's only 16 transactions. So the queue can uh, you can queue up 16 transactions and after that the cluster starts sending flow control stop signals so that every node will wait for the slowest member. And uh, keeping the pace of execution of, of, of in the cluster for even for all, all of the nodes. Therefore having the VSREP sync weight configured usually doesn't take cause too much delay for reads as well. The installation for uh, Calera cluster nodes uh, makes those nodes to be equal in terms of reading and writing. You can, you can always read from any of these nodes, you can write to any of these nodes. Calera cluster does not give you any, um, uh, does not stop you doing that. But uh, if you want to use Calera cluster as a master slave topology, you should have a read-write splitting happening in upper level in load balancer or proxy or sometimes some applications are clever enough to, to figure out that where to write to and where to uh, read from. But for color cluster there is no, no restriction. You can always write to any of these nodes. Most installations are, are working in a master-slave model so that the application or, or the load balancing layer will, will provide this read-write splitting and managing it. It's for simplicity reasons mostly. Also, a color cluster can uh, uh, sort out conflicts. So you can, you can write to any of these nodes, any table, any row. They can be row level conflicts, uh, but color cluster will pick a winner and loser for any conflict and uh, the loser will just roll back the transaction and get a deadlock error as well. Uh, Color cluster can uh, retry uh, a failed transaction because of such conflicts, uh, so that the client doesn't doesn't even get the deadlock error. Cluster retries it, and if it's successful, the client will see that uh, my transaction execution took two times longer than usually, but it was successful. <laughs> So this, this kind of automation is also possible to have there for multi-master use cases. Uh, and finally, we have added quite a lot of automation for color clustering. So in principle, you only need to make the configuration correct for all the nodes. You specify the cluster addresses correctly. And after that, if, if you start an node, it will automatically join. Eventually, if the database size is big, if it's terabyte, it, it can take hours, but eventually it will be a member in a cluster, I have a copy of the database, and then will be a member in a cluster. If a node drops out from the cluster for any reason, it will usually retry to join. 
and uh, it might be that the administration doesn't even know or see the effect that the uh, node went out before it has already automatically joined back to the cluster. That could also happen. Uh, how much different this is then with respect to asynchronous replication? Practically all the what was listed in the previous slide are, uh, are the, actually the differences between uh, Galera replication and asynchronous replication. In asynchronous replication uh, you can only write to master server and then all the slave servers uh, they, they are used for read-only purposes. Uh, Slave nodes, they may fall behind, so there can be slave lag, and that's because there is no flow control in asynchronous replication topologies. Master is as fast as possible, if they allow us, uh, any transactions to come in, and if the slave servers cannot keep up with the pace, then they will just fall behind. If uh, a master ser server needs to be replaced for some reason, then the whole topology must be con reconfigured so that there is a new master. New master must be picked up and every server must be configured to know that where the new master resides. So that's a uh, management uh, burden to, to have all that organized. If you are using Galera cluster for master server topology, you just to write to some other server node in the Galera cluster and that's it. So no, no failover needs uh, because of Galera in, in such scenarios. Uh, how about the versions then? So we, we started the Galera development in 2008, quite long stretch already, like 12 years of Galera development. First versions for MariaDB came, if I remember correctly, for 5.5 and then also 10.0. Uh, but starting the, uh, up to that point, there were uh, there were additional uh, Galera clustering uh, implementations that were not part of the MariaDB software stack itself. But starting from 10.1, Galera clustering is accepted as a in, in MariaDB mainline, so with uh, later MariaDB releases, you, you get a uh, color cluster, uh, color replication uh, included, and it's up to you to, to make the configuration to start using color cluster. Turn your MariaDB server to a cluster working with color replication. Uh, we have given uh, Galera major version numbers starting from 1 and most recent one is now 4. These are uh, versions that make a big impact for the overall uh, behavior of the cluster. They also uh, contain a, a, a jump in the uh, in the VSREP API, so the replication API has changed, and the way that the uh, Galera plugin and uh, database server communicate has been changed. And because of these uh, uh, changes in this API level, then uh, whenever there is a major Galera major version upgrade, it means that we also need to prepare a rolling upgrade path for the uh, for the solution. Uh, for database users it means that when you step, for example, the last big change was between Maria 10.3 and 10.4 and upgrading from 10.3 to 10.4 needed to happen in a certain way to make it safe. You, you need to have your first, uh, all your nodes in a cluster to be upgraded to the latest 10.3 version and then uh, node by node, just uh, upgrading one node in a, in a cluster to operate as a 10.4, and then the second node, and, and when, when the last node of the cluster has been upgraded, then the cluster is in, in the level of uh, uh, 10.4, and after that, 
uh, the internal replication in cluster starts to use the cholera 4 replication uh, methods. Uh, you cannot downgrade after that, so your cluster is then in, in a color 4 level and uh, your upgrade is complete. This rolling upgrade is usually quite uh, a tedious job to do, so testing-wise we have to do it, uh, reserve quite a lot of time to do that carefully and make sure that uh, uh, all live systems can be safely upgraded to the new new version. Uh, because of this we usually we want to pack uh, all changes for the replication API to happen not so often. So the uh, color replication 4 came with Maria 10.4. Now we have a 10.5 which is using the same VSREP API level and uh, for uh, Maria 10.6 we have not yet decided that what kind of features will go in there but uh, it may be that there are uh, there's a major change in a color or not but this is something to be decided in a, actually quite soon in, in a matter of one or two months all right last slide here summary of this presentation color of clustering itself it's present in MariaDB releases for a very long time uh, starting 10.1 it's already in every color class uh, MariaDB release uh, reason to use it uh, what people are saying is that uh, synchronous replication first and foremost quite most often looked reason then the data safety because of the fact that every node is a full backup of each other that's also uh, seem quite important feature and multi-master needs sometimes not so so much that we were anticipating when we started to use the uh, develop a color cluster we were hoping to see the the performance uh, impact of, of writing to several nodes but uh, that's not something that um, uh, that the applications need so much but it's uh, multi-master use case is good for for generality so that uh, you could treat your cluster equally it doesn't matter you don't need to care where you write to and if your application is not sensitive to conflicts right rights conflicts and seeing deadlock errors then uh, this might be a good good solution for such application as well color works well in wide area network and cloud installations uh, no problems there it's mostly because the replication itself is it's not sensitive to uh, latencies in, in, in the network uh, connections. Uh, Color 4 came with MariaDB 10.4 and it has 10.4 overall has significant new Color 4 features and, and other MariaDB features as well. So if you want to start evaluating and experimenting with color, I suggest you begin with 10.4 or later, just to avoid the uh, rolling up you that you would need to do when you, if you are in 10.3 or earlier, you, you have a one sure rolling up grade experience coming up quite soon. Uh, this rolling upgrade, as I said, it's supported so far for all versions and that's our policy that uh, our users, they, they are usually running clusters but which need to stay up 24-7, there is usually not much uh, accepted downtime for the cluster and because of that we need to make sure that whatever we release it's possible to upgrade uh, online in a hot system. That's all from my part and um, I guess questions are coming in a separate session after this airing and uh, don't forget the next uh, uh, presentation it's also coming for, from Color Cluster uh, about 10.5 and 10.6 new features coming later. Thank you and bye bye. <laughs>